You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, yesterday Donald Trump's gag order was extended in the New York criminal trial to include family members of the judge, and that was after Trump relentlessly attacked Judge Mershon's daughter. Today, Trump posted a video from Fox host Brian Kilmeade where he discusses debunked conspiracy theories about, you guessed it, Judge Mershon's daughter. So do you think he violated his gag order? Absolutely. So let's kind of take this incrementally. So Judge Mershon expands the gag order to include family members of, of himself, of the court, the court staff, of the prosecutor and the prosecutor's staff. Um, the next hurdle to overcome in holding Trump accountable for violating the gag order is, was Donald Trump on notice of the gag order being expanded? I know that may sound like a silly point to bring up, Brian, because in this day and age, we all know of everything that happens instantly, right, in real time, because it's broadcast on the news and on social media platforms. However, what the, the first thing that Judge Mershon will have to be satisfied of is that Donald Trump was specifically aware of the expanded gag order. How, do, uh, how does a court go about determining that? Well, he's going to have to inquire of Donald Trump's lawyers. Did you make him um, a, did you make him aware? Did you put him on specific notice of the new terms of the gag order I just imposed? That can be dicey. I know we don't want to get bogged down in these details, but I think it's important for everybody to know the procedure because I think everybody is thirsty for Donald Trump to be held accountable for endangering the lives of everyone who's involved in the endeavor of trying to hold him accountable for his crimes, right? That's witnesses and jurors and judges and prosecutors and their family members. So it gets a little dicey because the lawyers, you know, don't want to be in that sort of in-between area where the court asks them something about whether their client was specifically aware that the gag order had been expanded. Why? Well, Glenn, Be real quick, why wouldn't they just say no and then just save their client that way? Well, because they can't lie. Put it this way. They shouldn't <laughs> lie. They are duty-bound yeah. not to lie. They could be sanctioned up to and including disbarment if they do lie to the court. But anytime you have a lawyer who is a link in the chain of providing incriminating, potentially incriminating information about the client, it gets a little dicey. So I, I hate to say this may be the fallback position of the court, but the judge may say, listen, I am issuing what's called a show cause order. I am directing Donald Trump and his lawyers to appear before me tomorrow and show cause why I shouldn't hold them in contempt. And then Trump and his lawyers will have the opportunity to say, hopefully, truthfully, and accurately, whoa, whoa, oh, we didn't notify him immediately about the fact that you had expanded the gag order. Now, you know, that dog may not hunt. It may be a bunch of nonsense. But ordinarily, what happens is anytime a court imposes this kind of a restriction on a defendant, the defendant is either present or the defendant is made to sign acknowledgement that he has been specifically put on notice of these new conditions. But that, Brian, is the first hurdle that will have to be overcome here. And I can't say at this moment whether Judge Mershon and the prosecutors will be able to jump that hurdle. Now, in either case where he is found to have violated his gag order or, you know, if he gets the benefit of the doubt that he doesn't deserve and, and Judge Mershon says, OK, this one doesn't count because, you know, per perhaps your lawyers didn't tell you about it. But the next time it's going to count, what's going to happen when Donald Trump violates this gag order? You know, that's going to be up to Judge Mershon. Let's have a quick look at the New York rule and law that was cited by Judge Mershon when he expanded the gag order to include family members. So um, cutting right to the chase, if Donald Trump is found to be in contempt by violating the gag order, then he can be fined, not exceeding $1,000 big whoop, right? He can probably find that in the couch cushions uh, up on uh, uh, at Trump Tower if he rummages around long enough, or imprisonment for not exceeding 30 days. So in theory, if Donald Trump is found to have intentionally or knowingly violated this gag order, Judge Mershon could put him in a jail cell for as, as many as 30 days. 
And if Donald Trump continues to violate the gag order, there could be a series of 30 days, 30 day stints in a jail cell. So I think Donald Trump is getting himself closer and closer and closer to an orange jumpsuit every day and every time he thumbs his nose at these gag orders. So I'm going to I'm going to acknowledge the skeptics here because I know people watching this are going to say, Glenn, nothing ever happens to this guy. What do you say to those people in light of a line being drawn in the sand here by Judge Mershon extending this gag order? I would say I'm with you. I feel you. Nothing ever happens to this guy. But that doesn't mean nothing ever will happen to this guy. Now, how for how long, Brian, were we saying, is Donald Trump ever going to be indicted anywhere for any of his crimes? It took a long time. It took too damn long. In my estimation, he could have been charged the day he left office back in 2021, but he wasn't. We waited forever, and then we got indictment after indictment after indictment after indictment. Four criminal indictments, both state and federal. So now, what are we saying? Is Donald Trump ever going to be held accountable for violating gag orders? Well, remember, he was held accountable a couple of times by Judge N. Goron in the civil fraud trial and was made to pay monetary fines. Again, perhaps not a big deal to Donald Trump, but you know what will be a big deal? If he is incarcerated, if he's jailed, as he can be under the New York state law and procedure. Um, So here we are. We're going to sit and we're going to wait. We're going to say, is anything going to happen? I think just like in the indictment arena, just like in the trial arena, because Donald Trump is now on the cusp of going to trial in his first criminal prosecution scheduled to begin up in New York on April 15th. And Judge Mershon has affirmed and reaffirmed that it's a it's a solid trial date and we can all expect the trial to begin on April 15th. So I do think criminal contempt is coming. Now, under the laws and the procedures of New York state law, um, if the contempt is um, committed in the judge's presence, in other words, if somebody does something in court that qualifies as contempt of court, the judge can summarily punish it on the spot, literally saying, I find you in contempt and I'm ordering you jailed for X number of days. However, if the contempt is committed not in the presence of the court, then the def- and I would say when you're posting stuff, which is obviously in violation of the expanded gag order, it's probably strictly speaking not happening in the presence of the court. Although in this day and age of you know uh, of social media and the the electronic ability to kind of put everything everywhere instantly, which is not exactly how things were when these laws were enacted many years ago. I think there's an argument that when you post something, it is in the presence of the court. We'll set that legal issue aside for the moment. Let's assume it's not in the presence of the court under the New York statute. Then Donald Trump will have to be put on notice of the contempt charge and will be given some opportunity to defend himself. You know, there are these things called summary contempt trials, which are like little mini trials where the evidence is introduced, oh, here's the contempt, he posted something clearly violating the expanded gag order, here's Donald Trump's defense, maybe he wants to take the stand and say, oh, somebody else posted that on my social media account, I didn't do it, yeah, go with that, Donald, see how well you do with that defense, but the reality is there will be a process that will play out in court, and Judge Mershon will have to make a decision, did Donald Trump knowingly, willfully violate the gag order? You know, going back to the first half of your answer, I think that was such a great point in terms of, you know, looking back, looking back, you kind of get used to it. We kind of adapt to the to the reality that we're in right now. And, you know, we we feel the you know, you don't feel the Overton window shifting as you're in it. But if you had asked anybody a year ago what they would have thought if Donald Trump was indicted in four different jurisdictions and facing 91 criminal charges, found liable in three civil trials to the tune of more than half a billion dollars, I think everybody's heads would have rolled off. So for those watching right now, I know it feels like nothing is happening because we're kind of in the slow burn of watching it happen and watching him 
him be successful at getting a lot of the delays that he's seeking. And so it might feel like we're not getting anywhere. But at the same time, this guy is not in a good situation right now. He's, again, facing 91 criminal charges. He's in the hole for half a billion dollars plus. And, uh, and his first criminal trial is starting in two weeks, and he's going to be a convicted felon at the end of this. None of this redounds to Trump's benefit. It doesn't redound to his benefit financially or electorally, politically, any way you look at it. And so we might see these small victories for him and kind of confuse them or conflate them with thinking that he's winning overall. But like, any day of the week, I wouldn't want to be Donald Trump right now. Yeah, um, it's, it's, with that, yeah, let me just follow up on that. You know, it's important not to lose that perspective, Brian. You and I have been doing legal breakdown videos for a very long time. Uh, for, for years now, I've been doing uh, on my Justice Matters channel legal analysis videos. And when I was looking back at some of the ones from 2022, I was saying, folks, hang in there because 2023 will be the year of the Trump indictments. I can feel it in my old prosecutor's bones. And sure enough, we got a whole slew of criminal indictments. And then 2023, I was saying, you know what? 2024 will, will be the first year we see Donald Trump criminally convicted of at least some of his crimes. And I think we're still on track to, to see that come to pass. I'm no Nostradamus, but I do know that these things take so much time and we feel this hopelessness, a desperation, an anxiety. You know, that is any accountability ever going to visit Donald Trump? And I think the answer is it will, not quickly enough, but it will. And then when Donald Trump is in our rear view mirror, hopefully long gone and sitting in a prison cell somewhere, then I think we'll feel like, okay, a little bit of justice was done there. Now, let's dig in, let's retool, let's rebuild, let's reform the institutions of government that have been exposed as being not fully up to the task, and let's move forward, and let's really make this a better republic. And to that point, um, for those watching, I think that's why Glenn's perspective is so valuable, because you know a lot of us watching kind of want instant gratification. And we're like, well, we've seen him commit these crimes. It happened so long ago. Why is nothing happening right now? But, you know, these episodes kind of give us the opportunity to say, are these delays normal? What what um, what avenues can he take to seek the delays that he wants? What motions can be filed? What hearings have to happen next? And this stuff all takes way longer than any of us anticipated. Obviously, Glenn, with his 30 years uh, of experience, knows about all of that, but but just to kind of measure expectations for us so that we don't feel like the whole system is failing in a way as as kind of upsetting as it is to those of us who want swift accountability, this is kind of the system working normally or as it should, even though even though that isn't really down to, to our benefit most of the time. Uh, and, and with that said, um, I do want to take the quick opportunity right here for those watching, if you're not yet subscribed to Glenn's channel, I'll put the link right here on this screen. And if you're not yet subscribed to this channel and want to watch more legal breakdown videos, I'll put that link uh, on the screen as well. Uh, Glenn, um, w were you surprised to see that Judge Mershon actually moved to extend this gag order, given the spate of attacks that Trump uh, that Trump put forward against his daughter? No, I was actually surprised in the first instance when Judge Mershon opted not to specifically include family members. Now, you and I talked about it at the time. There was some vagueness in that first gag order that he issued. But, you know, when when Donald Trump continued to attack his daughter and when the prosecutors, D.A. Alvin Bragg and his team of prosecutors, brought it to the judge's attention that there really is um, a, a serious need to expand it to include family members, Judge Mershon acted at light speed to do so. So, no, I was not at all surprised that he kind of fine-tuned the original gag order to make sure he was protecting everybody who needed to be protected against Donald Trump's reckless violence-inducing statements and posts. And let's finish off with this. Do you think that Judge Mershon in particular, based on what you've seen from him, based on what you've heard from him, is not going to allow Trump to get away with any of his antics here? Yeah, I think he's going to hold Trump accountable. I, I think for the first time we may actually see Donald Trump suffer some concrete consequences that will really mean a lot to him, which is spending some time in a jail cell. I'm not certain it's going to happen, but I think he is closer to a jail cell now than he has ever been. And remember, Brian, Judge Mershon presided over the criminal trial of the Trump organization, and he dealt with Alan Weisselberg, Donald Trump's longtime chief financial officer, who was involved in decades of fraud 
as an officer of the Trump Organization. So he kind of has Trump's number, the Trump Organization's number. He knows exactly what Donald Trump is all about. And Judge Mershon and, has and, not And Weisselberg, sorry to, sorry to interrupt, but Weisselberg ended up in Rikers. And it looks like he's heading back to Rikers because after he did, I think, a five-month stint at Rikers for being involved in a 15-year-long criminal scheme to defraud in the first degree as an officer of the Trump Organization, he got out. He was called as a witness at Donald Trump's civil fraud trial in New York. And what did he do? He lied under oath to try to help out his man, Donald Trump. Looks like he's going to, back to Rikers. So nobody, nobody can accuse Alan Weisselberg of learning his lesson. Yeah, well, obviously, then Judge Mershon knows the kind of people that he's dealing with, and uh, and he's he's dealt with them appropriately. So we'll stay on top of this trial as it continues to play itself out. Again, it's starting in just two weeks here. So if you want to follow along with this trial, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Taylor Cohen, and I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching the Legal Breakdown.